Some years ago, I went to uh, uh, an island in the uh, in the Pacific, That's Bermuda. Cool. Perhaps you've been there, Bermuda. Uh, I met a man who was a hundred years old. Uh, he ate everything on the table. He smoked two packages of cigarettes a day. Drank a pint of whiskey every day, <laughs> and he loved the women. What's wrong with that? I asked him the secret of longevity. Well, he said, it's very simple. He said, I have no grudges, no peeves, no resentment, no hatred. Every time, he said, when I open my eyes in the morning, I say, this is the day the Lord hath made. Rejoice and be glad in it. Biblical. Then, he said, I say for about 10 or 15 minutes every morning, the rejuvenating, revitalizing power of God Almighty flows through me like a golden river. Vitalizing, transforming every atom of my being, so that every atom of my being dances to the rhythm of the eternal God. He found the secret of life. The secret of life is joy, inner peace, the invisible ingredient in the National Geographic magazine, the Worldwide magazine. There was an article some years ago by a professor from Harvard, a medical doctor a distinguished scientist on nutrition. He went to the Hunza territory near Nepal, in the south of Russia. He found people 110, 135, and some 150 years of age. They all sit around the table. They drink vodka, all kinds of wonderful food. But he said their diet is contrary to all the laws that all the laws of hygiene or diet that we know of in the Western world. They don't seem to know anything about the calories that we have established. He oh, cites you. the story of one woman, 135 years old. She's smoking all the time. He said, how many cigarettes do you smoke? Uh -huh. Two packages a day, she said. And then she has vodka for breakfast. <laughs> and he said they had tumblers of wine for every meal. He said he had to drink so much wine he was drunk. He, find, he found some women and some men in the fields working, 120, 125 years old. What was the invisible ingredient? Inner peace, equanimity, equanimity, serenity, goodwill, and the laughter of God, full of laughter. And the only being in all the world who can laugh is man. The reason for that is that God placed it in man so he'd get rid of his arrogance and pride. It's the finest way in the world to release tension. Anyone uh, can begin to synchronize with God's river of peace. A uh, wonderful exercise every morning would be the Psalms of God. The greatest prayers in all the world are in the Psalms. Nothing in all the world equals them. There are certain Psalms that people all over the world have used. These uh, psalms prevented them from the mouth of lions, from shipwreck, shipwreck, so-called incurable diseases, mountainous deaths, and fires on the ship. These experiences are in what we call the Akashic Record. Akashic, Akashic Record. It's a universal subconscious mind. In other words, uh, these experiences of people all over the world are recorded impregnated, indelibly writ written in the subconscious mind of the world, the universal subconscious. You know, it is written, there is nothing lost in all my holy mountain. Therefore, when you use these psalms with reverence and adoration, with veneration for things divine, you're tapping the same experience that these people had. And people are protected in miraculous ways. It's far better, of course, to know the inner meaning. But even if you don't, you'll get marvelous results nevertheless. Here are the psalms that you should use. 23rd, 27th, the first psalm, the 91st, the 100th psalm, and the 39th psalm. And the 37th psalm, everybody needs it. And you'll find wonders happening in your life. I talked to a woman who was jaded and bored and uh, frustrated. Did you ever hear a person say, I'm bored to death? That person is looking down on others. 
When you look down on others, you're looking down on yourself. You're demeaning and demoting yourself from all angles. Everybody is an epitome of the divine. This woman had pains and aches and conflicts. Where peace is, there is no pain. Where love is, there is no cancer. Peace and pain do not dwell together. Harmony and discord do not live together. When you say divine law and order governs my life, you can't be on a train that gets wrecked. For the simple reason, harmony and discord do not dwell together. You can't be in an old car that coughs and stops on the freeway. You can't be married to the wrong man. And you can't be broke. That's not divine law and order. You can't be frustrated, neurotic, or insane. It's heaven's first law. Your greatest prayer is divine law and order governs my life through divine love. Use it all the time. This woman's nerves, she said, were jangled. She was suffering from insomnia. There was nothing wrong with her nerves, but she was sending the wrong vibration through the nerves. The cure was very simple. She had lots of money, what I said was jaded and bored because she was not expressed. Women who are not expressed fill doctor's offices. Many women don't belong in the kitchen at all. They're artistic, they're musical, they're uh, maybe singers and so on. They seek to express themselves. When the old man says you must stay home, it costs him a small fortune. He has to pay Dr. Freitag a lot of money. <laughs> I'm trying to put him out of business. But uh, that is so true. If the husband had any sense at all, he would know that if his wife doesn't express her inner talents, she'll become a neurotic, sick, or get some disease. This is why we have so many women in America who are silent drinkers. They're alcoholics. They're not expressed. You're here to release the inner powers and the talents within you. This woman was interested in music. Uh, she was also interested in flowers. I could go out and take a course on flowers and arrangements of flowers. Give lectures at women's clubs. Most women don't know how to decorate their homes. Immediately she got absorbed and engrossed in flowers. She got interested in nature and the beauty of nature. And her whole mind was transformed. Don't you know that in England for many years, 70 or 80 years, they've taken people who are insane and placed them out in the garden. Arrangement of flowers and trees because they're dealing with harmony and beauty of nature. It's reordering the disturbed neurotic mind. Emerson, America's greatest philosopher, he was dying of tuberculosis. He wrote articles on nature. The trees, the flowers, the stars, the sun, the moon, everything appertaining to nature. One of the most beautiful things he wrote. He was filling his mind with beauty, order, symmetry, and proportion. He had a complete healing. He lectured all over the world, passed on over his 80s. Very simple. Also, they take these patients in the winter time, and they have them make toys, purses, chairs, for, and dolls for girls, you know. These people are using a saw, they're using a compass, they're using instruments which bring about order in their mind. You know, the man went to a psychiatrist, and he said, I'm losing my memory. I can't remember anything anymore, he said. What'll I do? The psychiatrist said, you have to pay first. <laughs> and that's, what, <laughs> that's one of the quickest ways to get a healing. Uh, what most people need is forgettery, not memory. They remember everything they shouldn't remember. Old grudges, old peeves, things that happened 50 years ago. Let me point out some weird ideas that people have about healing. Some years ago in New York, a young doctor got into trouble with women and so forth. He ended up in the mental institution. Her, his uh, his sister was a Christian scientist. She used to visit him every day and kept on praying for him. Months went by, nothing happened. Uh, she was very, very frustrated. No improvement of any kind, whatever. A uh, young doctor came in, this quite a number of years ago, and uh, they, uh, at that time they began to use insulin shock for schizophrenics and paranoids. From a thousand patients, this young research doctor selected him. He gave him insulin shock. 
he was completely healed and walked out of the hospital free. His sister, instead of being glad, was furious and angry to think that her brother had to get shots to get a healing. What a frightful, insane, stupid attitude. That woman's prayer was answered. Instead of being grateful, she was angry. My ways are past finding out. My ways are past finding out biblical. My, my way, God's ways. Uh, my ways are not your ways. And as the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways above your ways. So healing came through the doctor. Her prayer was answered. All healing is spiritual. If your uh, bones are broken and you don't get immediate results by prayer, you go to a bone surgeon, don't you? If you don't can't grow a tooth, go to a dentist. And if a, a man is bleeding to death on the sidewalk and you model some prayers and you don't staunch the blood, are you going to let him bleed to death? Don't you know that's murder? It is absolute murder. Uh, you would uh, put on a tourniquet and you'd take him to a hospital, wouldn't you? If a child is in the, falls into the, uh, into the water of the ocean and you speak the word and the child is in your arms, if you don't have that kind of faith, the best thing to do is to jump into the river and rescue the child. That's prayer also. If you can go from here to Berlin and dematerialize your body and be there, I would suggest Instead of walking, you take a bicycle or a car or an airplane. These truths are so simple. And there are crazy people that their relatives die rather than call a doctor or give medicine. It's absolute murder in the name of religion. Now, there, here's a man with a kidney infection, a damaged heart. Uh, most people don't have damaged hearts or they have... Uh, troubled hearts. The heart is the seat of love, emotion. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. And with all my heart I truly seek thee. The heart in Hebrew symbolism, they wrote the Bible, it means the subconscious mind. That's all it means. And this is the basis of all religions in the world. Call them what you want. It's in the book of Proverbs. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So does he become. So does he act. So does he experience. So does he express. That's the basis of all religions in the world. When shorn, shorn of their wrappings, trappings, superficialities, and externalities. Wrappings, trappings, superficialities, externalities, a creed, yeah. dogma, tradition. Yeah, in the old uh, liturgies, wafers, wine, all these things mean nothing. It is what you believe in your heart that is made manifest, not what you believe with your lips. To know your religion, I have to know your emotional responses. What you really believe deep down in your heart about God, life, and the universe. I would have to know your fears and superstitions. Because whatever is impressed in the subconscious mind must come forth on the screen of space. Yeah. Screen of space, the yeah. world. The world. Objective world. And that's, uh, that's uh, when a man knows that, he has some education. It's not what you...
It's what you think in your heart. Ideas emotionalized, put on wheels, impressed in your deeper mind. Good and bad are made manifest. That's the only religion in the world. Whatever ideas emotionalized, felt us through, felt us through. And these are the uh, things that are made manifest in their experience. In other words, man is belief expressed. It is done unto you as you believe. The law of life is the law of belief. That's the whole law. To believe is to live in the state of being. It's made of two words, be and alive. Be alive, you know, believe. To be alive to something. The law of life is the law of belief. I can believe, to believe something is to accept it as true. It may be an absolute lie. The whole world believes a lie. When they hear the truth, they think the truth is a lie. Uh, it's very simple in your Bible. Uh, it's done unto you the way you believe. What should you believe in? In the guidance of God, in the love of God, in the harmony of God, in the abundance of God, in the goodness of God and the land of the living, and in the abundant, joyous life. The only thing you ever experience in this life is what you believe subconsciously. For what is impressed is expressed. That's right.